Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about another type of meniscal tear, longitudinal vertical tears. So let's talk a little bit more about this. The longitudinal vertical tear is a tear that is perpendicular to the articular surface or perpendicular to the tibial plateau and it's parallel to the long axis of the meniscus. So the good news about this tear, the same thing about the horizontal tear, is that it does not compromise the circumferential fibers. So the meniscal function is maintained uh, in cases of longitudinal vertical tears, especially when the inner fragment is in uh, its own place, it's not, it, it, when it's not migrated for another place, okay? So most of the cases, the longitudinal vertical tear is a traumatic tear related to compressive forces. And so it's a tear of young patients and athletes, and it separates the meniscus in two parts, right? The internal part or the inner portion and the external part or the outer portion uh, of the meniscus. And when the tear is long enough, the internal fragment can migrate and when the internal fragment or the inner fragment migrate it can cause one of the most classic meniscal tears the bucket handle tears i'm gonna show an example at the end of this video of a bucket handle tears by the way and um, it has a predilection to the periphery of the posterior horn so it's a tear that generally speaking it starts or it uh, it initiate in the posterior horns of the medial or lateral meniscus and from there it goes anteriorly to the meniscal body and to the anterior horns of the meniscus and here uh two drawings showing the horizontal the the, the longitudinal vertical tear uh the tear this tear can be partial when it goes to just one articular surface or it can be complete when it goes to both uh, articular surface, the superior and inferior articular surface. So uh, we can uh, uh, we can see uh, partial tears just going to the inferior surface, partial tears just going to the superior surface, or a complete tear that goes all the way through the superior to the uh, inferior articular surface. Uh, of the meniscus. So um, here, this drawing here, uh, I want to emphasize that that's the normal uh, place of the longitudinal tear. This tear, it's generally located at the periphery or in the middle third of the meniscus in the talking about the short axis of the meniscus. So that's the normal place uh, of the longitudinal vertical tear. There is an important association with the ACL tear. 90% of the longitudinal vertical tears of the medial meniscus is associated with ACL tears. And 83% of the longitudinal vertical tears of the lateral meniscus is associated with uh, ACL tears. And generally speaking, this tear is more common uh, in the medial meniscus, six to seven times more common in the medial meniscus, right? And here, how we can see this tear on the MRI of the knee, okay? So here, let's say that this is a uh, medial meniscus, right? So this is the posterior horn, and this is the body of the, of the medial meniscus. And here we have some sagittal uh, slices going, passing through this area of the longitudinal vertical tears. And we can, uh, that's the way that we see this tear on the short axis of the meniscus. So the tear is here, it's a complete tear going through, going uh, to the superior surface and to the inferior surface. And that's the way that we see this tear in the short axis of the meniscus. The tear, it has the same distance to the periphery or to the inner portion of the meniscus in the different slices. You can see, we, we can see that the tear, it does not go uh inner or outer this uh this region right here it, it it remains in the same location right so that's a sign of a classic longitudinal vertical tear if this tear it goes 
uh, to the inner portion. For example, this is a marching left sign, and a marching left sign, it's a sign of an oblique tear. It's a parrot beak tear. It's another thing. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But the longitudinal vertical tear, the distance between the tear and the periphery and the inner portion of the meniscus, it remains the same in different slices, okay? In the short axis. So that's keep in mind that that's important to to understand. And here uh, in the coronal plane, uh, the tear is not very well identified because it's not uh, passing through the tear in the short axis of the tear. So these areas where the cut the cuts or the slices are passing through the tear, uh, the meniscus it. Uh, stays a kind of blurred it becomes blurred look like it becomes like this way it's blurred you cannot see the tear very well i'm going to show that uh, this uh, this effect in the in the in the pre in the next case here so here is a case of a longitudinal tear uh, in the posterior horn and the meniscal body medial meniscus so here here and here we can see the longitudinal vertical tear, we can see that the distance between the tear and the periphery and the inner portion of the meniscus, it remains the same. So that's really a uh, longitudinal vertical tear. And look here uh, uh, at the meniscal body, that in this region, the tear is also here, but we are but the, the slice is passing through the tear uh, at, in the same plane of the tear, so it gets blurred here and we cannot see the tear very well. Uh, on the other hand, when we uh, analyze the meniscus on the coronal plane, now we can see the, the vertical longitudinal tear uh, at the meniscal body very well. Look here, uh, the same distance between the periphery and the inner portion, the same relation, the same distance of the tear in this cut here and in this cut and also in this cut right here. So that's a, a longitudinal vertical tear. And we can see, so that's the pattern here in the meniscal body. And here now in the, uh, in the posterior horn uh, where the cuts, it, uh, the cuts pass, uh, the, the cuts pass through the tear, the same plane of the tear, almost at the same plane of the tear, the tear, we can see that the area of the tear turns the meniscus, the meniscus becomes blurred in this area. And another spectacular plane, and that's very useful to identify the longitudinal vertical tear, is the axial plane. Okay, for the horizontal tear, the axial plane, uh, as I have told you, it doesn't help too much. It's good to identify the paramenisco cysts and other lesions, other lesions that can come along with the horizontal tear. But uh, for the longitudinal vertical tear, the axial plane, it's wonderful. We, it's a plane very, uh, it's a plane that we can see the tear, that we can measure the, the length of the tear and now with the 3D sequences, it's even better to identify this posterior, this longitudinal vertical tears on the axial images. Okay, so keep that in mind. The 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 sagittal and the coronal plane, they are very good to identify the longitudinal vertical tear, depending on what part of the meniscus you are analyzing. Right, for the posterior and anterior horn, the sagittal plane is wonderful for the body, meniscal body, the coronal plane is wonderful to identify the longitudinal tear and the axial plane, it's, go it's good to identify all the, all the length, all the, all the extension of the, of, this, of the longitudinal vertical tear. And now let's see another case. And this one is a case with a fragment, with a complication, let's say. The, uh, it's a case of a bucket handle tear. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna make a video just talking about the bucket handle tear, right? But I, in this video, I just wanted to to show some some images about this to illustrate a complication of a vertical longitudinal tear. And so the bucket handle tear is one of the most common patterns of meniscal uh, fragment migration migration. 
um, it can reach 10% of the total case of meniscal tears. In some papers, 10% of the meniscal tears, they uh, are formed by bucket handle tears. And yes, the drawing is correct. Most of the time, the bucket handle fragment, it's larger than the native meniscus or the, meni the periphery of the meniscus that stays in its original position. So here it's a case of a bucket handle tear. We can see here the periphery of the, men the medial meniscus. That's the native meniscus. And here is the bucket handle fragment migrated in the intercondylar region of the, of the knee we can identify here the communication between the fragment and the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and here the communication the junction of the uh, of the fragment and the anterior horn of the medial meniscus and by the way look here the anterior cruciate ligament is torn in this case and like i told you most of the time when you see a bucket handle tear look for uh acl tear because most of the time uh, the acl tear will be there okay so here in the sagittal plane we can see the bucket handle fragment right here parallel to the uh pcl to the posterior cruciate ligament and that's a classic sign of a, a medial bucket handle tear this is the double pcl sign Okay, okay, so that's a beautiful case of a double PCL sign. And here we can see also in the axial plane the fragment here uh, in the inner in the intercondylar region of the knee. Uh, here is the uh, native uh, meniscus, that's the periphery of the meniscus. And here is the huge fragment, the huge bucket handle tear fragment in the middle of the knee in the intercondylar region. So now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about trap treatment. Uh, it's not the main focus here, but I think that's all, uh, uh, and it's useful to know a little bit about the treatment of these lesions. And meniscal repair can be a good option for the longitudinal vertical tears, especially when the tear is in the periphery of the meniscus in the red zone or between the red zone and the intermediate zone or when the meniscal margins are well defined and it's especially true in case of acute lesions when the lesions become more chronic uh, the the meniscal margins of the fragment and the native meniscus it starts to become macerated degener degenerated as the case that i just showed you the margins are, are were not very good and meniscectomy can be a can be a solution for cases like that and also when there is a tear in the inner zone in the white zone of the meniscus meniscectomy is the main choice uh in these cases so keep that in your system now the the information that i talked to you about the longitudinal vertical tear uh, the Isakus classification system, they just call that longitudinal tear, okay? So, but here in, in this video, I decided to call it longitudinal vertical tear because it's a term that everybody knows. And I hope that you enjoyed this video, that, yeah, that I could contribute a little bit more for your understanding for, of the longitudinal vertical tears. Thank you for your time. Have a great day and see you in the next video.